Well, good evening, everyone. Michael Soothing here. I thought what we would talk about today is organ drivers and the driver's manual. You see, Joanne is soon going to, in a few weeks, take her driving test, the practical test, the on-the-road test with the car. She already passed the test that goes, the written test that goes over all the rules of the road in Oregon. And she passed it on her first try, but she did a lot of study. This is a little bit high. I'm looking up. I don't like that. Oh, that's much better. Now I don't have to crane my neck to look up at you. Okay. Um, so I thought we would go through some of the stuff in here that she's going to have to make sure she does right when she goes for the actual driving skills test. By the way, I want to talk about some of my pet peeves with Oregon drivers. And if you live in Oregon, as some of my subbies do, don't be offended, because I'm not talking about you. I'm sure my subbies are not guilty of the things I'm going to discuss that drive me crazy with Oregon drivers. Of course, coming from the busy California highways, I promise we'll get to this in a little bit. First, I need to vent about drivers and bad drivers. We had our share, of course, in California of bad drivers. Most of them are on the reckless side, driving too fast, um, because everybody's in a hurry. It's a high-pressure environment, especially where I was living. However, most of them have good driving skills on average. So it was a mixed bag. Here in Oregon, I find the drivers are of a completely different type. We have basically two kinds of drivers here. We have reckless crazy, meth head, ride right on your bumper, drivers who are filled with road rage every moment they're on the highway, no matter who's there with them, usually driving a large pickup truck that you can't really see the driver because his headlights and grill are filling your mirror like that before he crosses, uh, before he passes you over a double yellow line on a blind curve, screaming obscenities while doing so. So we have that kind, but that's the minority driver type. Um, now, I say this as myself being a relatively aggressive, fast, driver. I seldom adhere to the literal speed limit, usually going about five to ten miles over in dry, perfect conditions, um, but I do not tailgate other drivers or make illegal or unsafe passes. Um, as I told you before, I've driven well over a million miles without ever causing an accident, and I plan to keep it that way the rest of my natural life. So, I shouldn't have said that. It could put, you know, bring down a karmic uh, issue. Anyway, um, so the first type of Oregon driver 
is the extraordinarily rude road rage meth head driver. But there's a much larger population of drivers in the state of Oregon, Oregon, um, who my uncle characterizes, my uncle who lives in Oregon characterizes as Oregon buffoons, okay? Which I thought when I heard him say it was a fairly appropriate label. Let me tell you what the Oregon buffoons do that I did not notice in other states I've driven. First of all, they drive very, very slow. They are the driving equivalent of ASMR video. Um, except you might say to yourself, well, that has its good side, too, because that means they must be safe drivers, right? Wrong. They drive very slow, but very, very stupid, okay? But that's the only adjective I can use that's printable on my profane-free video. Uh, because what they do is, although they drive slow, they don't have the slightest idea at any time what's going on around them, or the rules of the road, or anything remotely related to those topics. And they make dangerous moves uh, about once every minute. For example, they tend to just roll through stop signs without even looking when they're making a right turn. So if you're coming down the road like this and they're going to merge in from the side and they have a stop sign, they just roll right through it and pull right in front of you, causing you to have to slam on your brakes. Okay. Uh, that's one of many habits I've seen. Their lane discipline is terrible. They weave back and forth. And I'm not talking even about people distracted by cell phones. Is my cell phone off, by the way? Let me check. I don't want any rude interruptions while I'm talking to my subbies. Um, yeah, they weave around in their lane, la-di-da, half oblivious to where they even are. Um, they don't notice things, and then when they think they're complying with the law, they're usually doing it wrong. For example, this manual here says, if a pedestrian's crossing the road in a crosswalk, you know, you have to wait for them to get all the way across before you go, okay? That's whether there's flashing pedestrian lights or not. The Oregon drivers fall into one of two camps. Those who don't pay any attention to pedestrians and try to run them down or those who think they always have to stop and stay stopped from the moment the pedestrian steps off a curb until the moment they get to the opposite side back on the curb, um, which is not what the law says. If you have a divided highway road in town, for example, with a big, long pedestrian crossing across it. Um, by law, you're required to wait when the, and, you know, and there's a break in between the two, you know, double yellow lines or a divider or something like that. So I'm talking four lanes, right? With something in between and a crosswalk. 
if someone's walking in that crosswalk across the two lanes where you're sitting and waiting, you must wait until they're fully across those two lanes. But you don't have to sit there like an idiot, moron, empty-headed dolt as they continue to cross the other lanes on the other side of the road. But so many Oregon drivers only know half of what this book says and never bother with the second half, okay? So there's that. It's also like emergency vehicles. If there's an emergency vehicle behind you with a siren and flashing lights, you must pull to the right and let them pass. Yes, that's correct. But Oregon buffoon, dolt headed, empty headed, vacuum between the ears drivers think that you have to pull to the right when there's an emergency vehicle going the opposite direction past you, which is not part of the Oregon law at all. Okay, but they all do it because they only understand half the law. So it's a pet peeve of mine. Um, what else is some of the habits? Oh, if you're ever in Oregon driving on Highway 5, the main thoroughfare is usually four-lane highway going north-south or south to north. It goes all the way from Canada to Mexico, but it's the main highway through the center of the state. And uh, if you're on Highway 5, you'll notice a couple of things. One is the truck drivers take great delight in blocking you. So if two slow trucks are going up a steep hill, one will pull out to pass the other one and then proceed to go at the same speed as the other one for miles without ever passing as the line of cars behind him well just people like me who are a little impatient the other buffoons don't even notice i think um you know get upset why they do this i do not know it saves them zero time but another weird habit i see Again, this seems to be strangely tied to pickup truck drivers, but I also see a lot of sedans doing the same thing as, as you're going down the highway, pretend this is the highway, okay? And um, let's see, from your direction, uh, from my direction, uh, this is the left side and so we're going down a four-lane freeway, Interstate 5. On the left side is the shoulder with all the gravel and crap on it. And, you know, you're supposed to stay in your lane. Over and over, I see drivers who weave out of their lane to the left. Let's do this in the opposite direction for you. Out of their lane. And they're half on the shoulder, spewing gravel up onto your windshield to pit it with little micro cracks and uh, denting your paint. Why do they do this? I have no clue. But I see it over and over and over. They don't do it for visibility because someone's in front of them, because they do it all the time whether anyone's there or not. It's not that they're weaving back and forth. They just weave over to the shoulder and they drive that way at usually slower than the speed limit, like 55 in a 65 zone. Oregon dolts, watch for that. 
if you're ever driving north, south on Highway 5. Okay, all that said, I'm trying to teach my um, Filipina spouse how to drive in America. Not that she ever learned in the Philippines or Sweden and Denmark because she didn't. And it's a difficult thing to start doing when you're 45 years old. But she's making incremental progress. Um, and I have no doubt she will pass her driving test at the appropriate time. So what does it say? in the driving manual. It says, everything you need to know to pass is in this section. Of course, that's the written part. You know, we have the usual stop signs and yield signs and things like that. Chevrons, winding road, no turn on red, you can turn right at a red light here, just like in California, if you come to a full stop first and there are no vehicles coming from your left. However, there is one strange thing I've seen in Oregon that I haven't seen elsewhere. Every now and then, you'll come to a stop sign that says, that it's not required to stop, <laughs> which makes no sense to me. Why not put a yield sign there instead? Not required if there's no vehicles coming, so people can blow right through that stop sign without stopping. That seems strange to me. One handy thing they have here is they have signs that tell you when there's going to be a reduced speed ahead. We don't have this much in California, but it's very common in Oregon. See, that means when you get a further down the road, you're going to drop to 45 miles per hour speed limit. So they give you these little warning signs so you can slow down first. Uh, which is good because the small towns in Oregon raise their revenue by giving people speeding tickets like crazy. Um, most of these towns have a speed limit of 30 or 25 as you roll through town. Down in Coos Bay, there's even sections that are 20. So you go through a speed limit sign progression that goes from 55 to 45 to 35 to 30 to 20, all in the space of a, you know, half mile or something down in that part of Highway 101. I don't recommend speeding through any small town in Oregon unless you like to get speeding tickets. And the Oregon buffoons here, unable to figure out whether their speedometer says 30 or not, will slow to 20 in a 30 zone just to make sure they don't get a ticket. They can't be bothered with monitoring their speed and so they go walking speed through town and that way they don't have to go through the tremendous effort of glancing down at their speedometer indicator. All right. Again, for my beloved Oregon subbies, I'm not talking about you, of course. All right. So I know you don't do any of these irritating things. All right. Um, they have flashing yellow arrows here for turning left. 
so uh, that's kind of handy. In California, they don't bother with that. You turn left on a green light, or left on a green arrow, or it's red. It's either red or green, but here they'll give you, if it's a green arrow that lets you turn left, They'll give you a flashing yellow sometimes. Um, so, usually in the evening. So that you can turn left even without the red. But you got to wait for oncoming traffic. Basic rule law. Your speed has to be reasonable and cautious for existing conditions. Joanne was driving close to the speed limit the other day and a giant red pickup truck came up and the guy was screaming and using his middle finger and all kinds of other things. Um, I've taken to carrying pepper spray and sometimes a firearm in the car because of the crazy road ragers here. I think half of, like I told you, the, the predominant is the slow, oblivious driver. But that's peppered in with, I wonder if the slow, oblivious buffoon drivers are what has driven the road ragers completely insane. Could that be the case? No, I think it's meth. But anyway and bad attitudes. We live in paradise here. Don't get the impression that I'm bashing Oregon because we actually live in such a beautiful place. Great climate. You know, it's been in the 60s and 70s as the rest of the nation's roasting hot. In the winter, it'll be in the you know, 50s when the rest of the nation's freezing cold. So, I can't. Beautiful lakes and streams, the ocean, mountains, trees, and wildlife. Why should people have an attitude? But they do. What can I say? When you go to take the test, they always try to fool you with nonsensical questions that have lots and lots of words and adjectives, you know. When you're crossing a broken yellow line that segues into a white line before a three-way intersection that's in reverse order of a circularity, which of the following is correct, you know, it, they're worded like that, you know so that you can't understand what they're trying to say. Following distance. I'm not really going through this book very well, am I? I keep rambling about Oregon drivers instead. Following distance. A safe following distance is defined as two to four seconds. Well, in California manual, they try to characterize it as car lengths. One car length for each 10 mile per hour of speed. So, um, yeah. What I keep telling Joanne is, don't leave too big a gap between you and the car in front of you. The reason being is, Cars from the right will always pull right in front of you at a crawl when you're doing 55 on a Highway 101 where there's all these driveways and towns, um, campgrounds and things. Of course, some of them look first. They look to you and they see you coming and say, oh, there's a car coming that will get in a wreck if I pull out, but now that I checked, I'll pull out anyway, right? It's always amazing to me. They look at you and then pull right in front of you 
as you're going 55. And I think to myself, why did you look first? So I tell Joanne, it's safer to be a little closer to the car in front of you than to leave a big gap. Also, you don't want a head-on accident, which there are many of around here, because of the road rage, unsafe people that pass illegally over double yellows and such. So if you stay fairly close to cars in front of you, you don't tempt somebody with a big wide gap who's going to pull out coming the opposite way and leave not enough space and slam into you head on. Something that we try to avoid most days. I hate it when someone slams head on to me at 55 or 70. It ruins my day. Um, you know, you don't want a broken nose from an airbag exploding in your face, or much worse, right? So, oh look, no passing. With solid yellow lines, there is no passing. With a broken yellow, I had a hard time helping Joanne understand this. If you have a broken yellow on your side and a solid yellow next to it, you can pass legally. If no cars are coming the other way, I'm actually surprised where they put some of the passing light, um, where they paint the lines allowing for a pass where it would be unsafe at any speed because there's a hill you can't see over or a blind curve but anyway you can't really pass on the right it says here passing on the right except with a couple exceptions the vehicle you are passing is making a left turn or signaling for it, and you can do it safely without leaving the paved portion of the road. See, I already know that, but Oregon buffoons do not. So they have a nice, wide, paved place to pass when someone's making a left turn, but they refuse to do it so they just stop behind the other car and cars coming 55 behind them could slam right into them if they're not paying attention. Um, being passed, when another driver starts to pass you, stay to the right. That makes sense, yes? You can help the other driver pass you safely by checking oncoming traffic and adjusting your speed to let that passing vehicle move back in as soon as possible. Well, what Oregon buffoons do if you give them any warning that you're passing them, even if they've never gone over 25 miles an hour in their life, they suddenly go 90 if you're trying to pass them on the left. So better not to give them any notice because um, they don't it's a passive aggressive thing they want to force you to go at the same crawling speed they're going um, for reasons I don't understand I even saw an Oregon buffoon the other day that had a bumper sticker on the back of his window that said leave earlier you moron now it makes sense to plan for enough time to get to your destination so that makes a little bit of sense but the real message he's giving is i'm gonna drive half the speed limit and try to infuriate you and this bumper sticker will help. So, 
he was a guy who was trying to induce road rage in other drivers. But I didn't take the bait, okay? Not very much anyway. I don't use uh, middle finger gestures uh, or things like that when I'm driving. I've been cured of that by the women who ride with me over the years. Does anyone still do manual signals for turning? Putting your arm up like that, you know, if you're turning right, putting it to the side if you're going left, putting it down if you're going to stop. I'm not sure anyone does that anymore. I remember them teaching us that in driver's training. Roundabouts. We don't have too many of these. But there are a few in Oregon. That's where you get into a little driving circle and you're trapped for life, going in circles indefinitely into infinity. Um, white canes and guide dogs. No. Pedestrians. Do not pass a vehicle stopped at a crosswalk. That's good advice because you can't see that there's a person crossing in front of them. And if you go to pass them, you're going to hit that pedestrian. If you want a little entertainment sometime, get on YouTube and look up um, Road Rage Idiot Driver or instant karma. If you heard that fart pipe vehicle, it's just one vehicle in the neighborhood that does that. Uh, and he likes us to hear him. So he'll stay in first gear. In fact, the odd thing is, if you're listening close, you heard him go by. He always comes back by again, shortly, which makes no sense. It's like he wants us to hear him twice. Let's see if he does it again today. He's not picking someone up first, because I've looked. He, he goes down the street someplace, turns around, and comes back the other way. Let's see now. School speed limit, 20. Once again, many Oregon buffoons think you always have to go 20 in that zone. They've never bothered to read the manual that says, if the light is flashing and or children are present. So in summer vacation, for example, you don't have to slow to 20 in that school zone, but they can't be bothered with such a mentally taxing, complicated law as that. That it's for when kids are there that you go 20, okay? So they dutifully, there he goes. Did I tell you? He would go down, turn around, and fart pipe his way the other direction. Oregon buffoon. He's our local. You have to have one in the neighborhood, right? School buses. Yes, you can pass a school bus, but not when its lights are flashing. Some people can't make that distinction because they're buffoons. Railroad crossings. I actually like to walk down and watch the train go by. Late in the evening, close to the waterfront, where the lumber train goes by. Because I'm into trains. It's the Asperger part of me. 
this is what we have to work on, Joanne and I. Parking and stopping. We're not quite there yet with the whole parking thing. And don't even talk to me about parallel parking because I'm never going to teach it. But yes, I'm being patient, folks, with my driving instruction. Except when I yell and scream, you know, what are you doing? You know, what are you thinking? Why did you do so? When I do that, she says, don't ask why I did something or ask what I'm doing. Just tell me what to do. And so I've learned. Driving off the road. If you should drive, driving off the road, if you should drive off the road, you need to know how to safely get back on it. That won't work so well on most of these roads. If you slip off the road, as many people around here do because of their bad lane discipline, you're not going to be back on the road anytime soon because there's a steep drop off and your car is going to end up lodged in some trees or brush down an embankment but it says don't panic or brake hard slow down till you can get back on the road safely won't work around here turn the front wheels just enough to get you back on the road don't turn sharply, or you might go across the road into oncoming traffic. Uh, animals. Animals. We have a lot of deer around here, and they camouflage pretty well. All kinds of wildlife can be crossing the road at any time, so you have to be very cautious. But you can't slam your brakes and go into oncoming traffic and kill yourself in order to save that cute raccoon. That's bad practice. However, you should try very hard not to hit a deer because they have spindly legs and their, deer, their body is going to roll right up through your windshield and crush you if you run into them at high speed well, and they panic and jump in front of you I've seen this around here several times even on the main drag through town there was a couple of deer not long ago that got on the main road two lanes each way center of town my eyebrows just a little itchy and they were just jumping around in all directions. They were so confused. Luckily, um, we stopped and just waited until they figured out how to get somewhere else. Because they were going every which way. Um, yeah. Snow and ice. We don't have much distracted driving the other okay now in California the plague there the worst driving infraction there of course was everyone on their damn cell phone paying no attention to their driving those were the people that would outrage even the Pope um, and try his patience. But here on the Oregon coast, it can be anything that distracts the driver. For example, I saw a guy the other day in an old beat up car. We were on Highway 126 and we were in a speed zone that is 55 miles per hour. He was literally 
I don't exaggerate here, literally going 20 to 25, one hand on the steering wheel, weaving back and forth in his lane, drunk, no, talking to his passenger, some woman on the right seat. He didn't have the slightest idea what he was doing with his driving, nor did he care. He, I, where is the cop when you need them? You know, he would have been pulled over for sure. But what do you do when your accelerator sticks? I hope it never happens, or your power steering fails, or your brakes fail. They tell you here what to do. I've never had any of that happen, so I don't know. I mean, I know what to do, but what else do they say here? Oh, you know what can be confusing? Joanne was asking me, What's the difference between an interstate highway, a state highway, you know, a roadway, um, a U.S. route, etc., etc.? And I said, well, the difference between a state highway and a regular highway is easy to understand, but I'm not going to explain it because I don't know. Anyway, no, I do know. Like five is an interstate. It goes through Oregon, California, and Washington State. Whereas a state highway is just in Oregon only. Yeah. Basic rule. Do they have anything else here? Oh, you can only go 15 if you're in an alley. So, keep that in mind. Test vehicle. Oh, rules and guidelines for the driving test. Remove the weapons from your vehicle before taking a drive test. Hmm. That's good advice, I think because you wouldn't want the driving uh, test guy um, to get upset and grab your weapon. Um, turn off electronic devices in your vehicle, including your cell phone. Yet I don't think you'll pass the driving test if you suddenly start taking phone calls while you're driving and, you know, looking around and saying, yeah, yeah, get some uh, lamb chops and maybe some, you know. So, remove objects from the dashboard and the rear view mirror. You can't have the little dancing hula girl on your dashboard when you take the driving test. Even if you are um, very bonded and attached, okay? If you are 18 years or older and you fail the drive test, you must wait seven days before taking it again. If you fail again, you have to wait 14 days. Is this video too long? People keep saying, oh, I like your video long, or your video's too long, right? Test vehicle. The vehicle must start under its own power when you take the driving test. So you can't ask the uh, DMV driving test uh, instructor guy to push it to help you start, right? You have to have turn signals, brake lights, and a horn. The passenger door has to open and close with a handle, you know, not a big screwdriver or something. It's just a little tip, tip before you go, you know. Uh, you can't make the guy who's grading you climb through the window to get in. Um, you must
must have side view or rear view mirror. The examiner, blah, blah, anyway. We'll make sure that we have all that. You have to have proof of insurance, things like that. You know what we have here? We have a lot of people who ride bikes along Highway 101. It's a 55 mile per hour highway, very narrow, one lane each way. They're riding a bike and if an Oregon buffoon should lose their precise navigational skills next to that bike. That guy's going to be history. So I always worry about the bike riders. Also, when you see people weave way out into your lane coming the other way, it's often because they're avoiding bike riders. It's kind of scary because there's so many in the summer. I think that'll do it for this video. Hey, my battery never died. Hmm, what's wrong with me? I have one that worked all the way through. Speaking of driving, you know my advice. Don't ASMR.